So welcome back to our YouTube channel, Hayes Machinery. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. So in front of me, I've got a Husqvarna 592 XP chainsaw. You've probably seen some of the previous videos that we've done. We've bashed a mash out in the woods. We've given it a really good blast to see what this saw's all about. But today I'm in our workshop and we're gonna talk about the nitty gritty of it. What's internally going on inside the saw? What things might have changed since some of the things they've already produced? We'll strip it apart as much as possible. This is our demo saw, but thank you ever so much for joining us once again and let's dig in. So this 592 XP chainsaw, as it says on the tin, is around 92 cc, 92.7 cc to be exact. You've got a weight of 7.4 kilos, that's excluding the cuttering equipment. The bar sizes are standard anywhere from 24 up to 36 inches with this model. And as you can see, this one's fitted with the x Tough light bar. Some of the standard specifications with the saw, the engine is producing 5.6 kilowatts of raw power. The maximum power at speed is 9,600 RPM and your idling speed is around 2,800 RPM. Max torque, 5.87 Newton meters. And your clutch engagement when you're feathering the throttle picks up at 4,300 RPM. You've got fuel consumption of 462 grams per kilowatt hours. You've got an adjustable oil type system, which can be adjusted at the bottom of the chainsaw. And a sound power level is measured at 118 decibels. So this saw absolutely screams. It features the new Auto-Tune 3.0. This chainsaw starts easily and runs optimally in all conditions. It's constantly adjusting itself to the fuel, air, altitude, and any other factors that this saw might come across. The powerful X-Torque engine combined with the new X-Cut C85 chain, which is a large 3.8, delivers best-in-class cutting capacity and power-to-weight ratio on the market. It's either equipped with the X-Tough or X-Tough Lite bars, which are available from 20-inch to 36-inch in the UK market. Ideally designed for professional forestry users and tree care workers who demand the best in heavy-duty performance, reliability, and operation, with well-balanced maneuverability. So having the Auto 3.0 added to the machine, the engine settings are always optimised for maximum startability and performance in all conditions, keeping you going no matter the challenges, no need for manual carburation adjustment. So there we go, We've gone through some of the key specs of the chainsaw, which you might already know, but we'll start stripping it apart and have a look at some of the internal stuff that's going on. So first of all, we'll take off the guide bar and chain, get that bit out of the way. Ooh, a bit dirty. So there we go. That's our guide bar and chain. So this one's fitted with the X-Tough Light guide bar. So uh, this is a Japanese made guide bar, which you probably all, all know about. But basically this is laminated with centers cut out. It just makes it a lot lighter and easier to manoeuvre, especially if you're gonna go for a 36 inch guide bar. That's running the uh, X-Cut C85 chain, which is basically a, a 1.5mm 3.8 chain, so large 3.8. So the first thing you can see straight away, clutch cover is that sort of alloy type material. You've got a chain adjustment, which is side chain ad adjustment there, just on, an, on a screw. So that's really, really easy to adjust your chain. The other big thing, uh, as I mentioned in another video, is the double dogs. So these are standard on the 592 chainsaw. So if you've got some real rough wood that you want to dig into, this will just give you a bit bit better purchase. So um, that's standard on that. And, that. and they're removable on the outside one anyway, so you can remove that if you wish. Bit dirty, because obviously, like I say, this is our demo saw. Right, the other thing, as you can see, you've got an external rim sprocket. So if your clutch starts wearing, with most domestic saws, basically you've got a sprocket, which is built into the clutch. You've got a, that's quite an expensive thing to replace. You've got to replace all the clutch assembly. Whereas with these high performance saws, you have a rim sprocket. The rim sprocket is removable, which means all you've got is a little tiny small piece to remove and change when your chain digs into your sprocket. So you've got a little tiny circlet. We'll take that one off. Little catchment washer. Right, so this is the removable rim sprocket. Currently, this is a 3.8 spec by 7 tooth sprocket, which is replaceable. I should imagine within time, there'll be other sprockets you can put onto it to change guide bars, chains, what have you. But at the moment, you're running a 3.8 chain, so that's a 3.8 by 7. <clears throat> there we go. Just take the clutch off. Really nice, heavy duty, thick wall clutch, so you're going to get plenty of life in that. The other noticeable thing is where your worm gear drives 
uh, the oil pump, you've got some really deep cuttings there. Normally, a lot of other makes and brands, all you've got is a little tiny notch and it's just driving a little tiny wire, but this one here looks like it's a really heavy duty oil pump. It will spin the clutch off in a minute, have a look, but yeah, that's some decent, decent cuttings there. So impressed with that. And that's your clutch bearing. So again, that's greasable. You can uh, easily whip the clutch off, put some grease on that clutch bearing, stop that wearing out. That's a nice thick bit of kit as well. So there we go. So first things you can see, decent airflow from that air filter. There's a couple of different types. So if you want to upgrade the filtration system on it, you can get uh, different types of air filters. This is just a standard felt one it comes with. Undo that one. As you can see, loads of air will get in through there. Got decent airflow entry. All Husqvarna x torque chainsaws come with the twin ports on the carburetor. What that does, it allows twice as much air into the saw, gives you more raw power. And yeah, so that's, that's what that is. We'll quickly take the plug out. Got a good NGK spark plug in there. I should imagine it's a CMR6H. Yep, CMR6H spark plug. So we'll take that one out. Just spin it around so you can see the rest of it. And you've got a decompression valve just there as well. Obviously, this is such a big, powerful saw that for you to start it on full compression when it's cold, you're going to need a bit of assistance. So just push that one in. That allows it to be easily pulled over until it initially fires. When it fires, the pin will pop back out again and then it's, it's ready to use and then you'll get your full power then. So that's your decompression lever just there. Right, let's take off the recoil assembly quickly. So T27 Torx bits, you've got four screws. We'll take that out quickly. Obviously, if with anything new, they're always upgrading little bits and pieces. So the componentry is always that much better. So that's nice and neat. Got plenty of airflow coming into the carburetor there. So your cooling fins of your flywheel. This is what reacts with the coil, which creates your spark. These are spinning round. That's pushing air up into the carburetor. That's giving you more raw power as well. So that's a decent, decent setup there. The other thing I forgot to mention is I really like how Husqvarna, it's just a little tiny simple things like here to get the AV mount spring out. It's really simple. You've got a screw just in there and a screw on the front and that'll just pull out. And they've even got little tiny should we say catchment wires? And what that is, is obviously when the machine's being used, if it's moving about and you're putting a lot of force onto it, that wire is just stopping that spring being overexerted. So that's a really nice feature. Right, what we're gonna do, we're gonna block up that spark plug and we're gonna knock the clutch off. Right, so I got my piston stop in the engine. We're just gonna smack the clutch off. So there's really handy markers on here. If you just turn the clutch till it's up on its piston stop, and then there's three little notches on the clutch. If you use a plug spanner, chisel, anything like that, and a hammer, that should just spin off. There we go. So we'll spin the clutch off. Nice and simple. And that'll come off like that. So that's what you call your clutch shoes and your clutch springs. Right, so this is a bit I'm really interested in, is this oil pump. So look at that. That's what I was on about. Really decent drive gear on there, which uh, when incorporated on the clutch, you know, you're not gonna break that off in a hurry. So that's a decent bit of kit. And now basically that works off the, the speed of the engine again. When you rev up your engine, it's automatic feed when the chain's spinning. So it's not gonna dribble oil out when it's idling. So it's only designed to engage when, when you rev the, the engine up. Really hefty oil pump in there. We'll dig that one out, have a quick look at that as well. Have a look at the bearings and the crank and how all that's supported but it's a real decent sized crankshaft on there. That's probably half the size again of a lot of other pro machines on the market. So that's really impressive. So they thought about that, put some engineering into that. So let's quickly whip off that oil pump and see what's going on below there. Give this a bit of a clean off. So everyone can see what's going on. So that's a pretty beefy oil pump and that, and that bit there. That adjusts your oil flow rate. So if you want more or less oil, that can be adjusted on that point there. So if you're running a slightly shorter guide bar, you don't need quite so much oil. If you're running a bigger guide bar, obviously you need more oil to get to the end of the guide bar and keep the lubrication up. So you've got an adjustable oil pump there as well. And as you can see in there, sorry, it's all a little bit dirty, but your oil pump draws oil from this point here and pushes it out your oil gallery, which then goes up to your guide bar and then that will basically run out your oil hole on your rail. And that's what it keeps it oiled. So it's a really simple system. Decent looking bearings in there. They're all captive with inside. So it stops the bearings or anything pulling out. And obviously seals are built in as well. And that oil adjuster, just worth mentioning, 
that can be adjusted any point really easily just from underneath the chainsaw. So we'll take that bit off, there we go. Right, next bit, we'll have a look at the front of the engine. So a really nice exhaust system. These are fitted with spark arresters. We'll take that off in a moment. We'll have a look at the exit hole from the cylinder or the exhaust port. And we'll have a look at the piston, have a look in the internals as well without stripping the cylinder off. I'll just give you a good idea of what's going on in there. I don't know if it's got one piston ring, two piston rings, three, whatever, but I should imagine it's probably got two, but we'll, um, we'll take the exhaust off and have a look at that as well. That's pretty cool. So there's three mounting holes on this, this exhaust straight into the cylinder. There we go. I was actually surprised how long those bolts were on that exhaust. It took me a while to take that off. You know, that's obviously sat well in the uh, cylinder, so you're not going to have any issues with those bolts snapping off in a hurry. There's your spark arrestor I was on about. So there's certain countries in the world that this is a legal requirement to keep fitted. Normally very arid countries which struggle with some sort of grass fires and that sort of stuff. So what that does, it just stops any sparks coming out of the exhaust. These can be cleaned out as well. Generally, you don't normally get these blocked up with chainsaws because they're used at full throttle all the time. But you do find with some two-stroke machinery that they do get carboned up, especially domestic users. They, they use their machinery on half throttle and it's not burning the fuel effectively. These will get blocked up and cause an issue basically with, um, with power loss. So these are removable and can be cleaned out just with a wire brush. But as you can see, you've got a decent output into the uh, exhaust. You're not gonna have any restrictions there. That's really decent, that. And coming into the front of the engine as well, as you can see, your exhaust port is huge. And if Will does a bit of a close-up in there, as you can see, I'm just gonna spin it round. You've got two piston rings. So that's gonna keep the uh, oil flowing within the engine or the fuel oil mix and keep that engine well lubricated and keep it nice and cool. Right, so this really is the business end. This is your carburetor, modules, ECU. This is what keeps the engine running, keeps the fuel and air quantities adjusted. As you can see, a little bit of wiring going on there. You've got a service port, which we're gonna plug into the computer in a moment. We've probably run this for, what, four or five hours now. James bedded it in over a weekend. Obviously we are in the woods as well. We've done some cutting here back on site. So it's had a, it had a bit of a bedding period. Really simple operation on this one. Your on off switch is just here. Fuel primer, primer fuel system. This makes for easy starting. The other thing you'll notice is Husqvarna on a lot of their pro chainsaws, this bit here, use a throttle cable. So it just makes for easier Throttle, a lot smoother acceleration, so it's not like that, you know, or you've got uptake. It is very, very smooth. But if you want to go full bore, squeeze it and you'll have acceleration straight away. Absolutely fantastic system, that, with the cable. And then, basically, as I mentioned to you before, you've got twin ports on the carburetor. So that's your X-Torque combined with your intake from your flywheel. That's giving you raw, real raw power from this saw. So if you've got real hard forestry applications where you need lots and lots of power, then the Husqvarna 592 XP chainsaw is for you. Right, I thought this would interest a few of you. Literally just got to a point where we're putting the exhaust back on. And I just mentioned to Will, normally it takes you quite a few attempts to line up the bolts into the holes and get them all sort of working in and screwing in. But this design, what they've done, as I mentioned, the, the bolts are quite long. And I wondered how far they went back. Basically, your four cylinder head bolts have got four screw holes on top of the cylinder to get them off the crankcase. If Will does a bit of a zoom in, what you'll see, as I've screwed the bolts in, they actually go through the hole of the cylinder, or cylinder head bolts, and if I just turn it around furthermore, and if Will just goes and looks in there, you'll see you put it through the front cylinder, so you can line up your bolts. They're captive then, and then all you do is you just carry on screwing in. The bolts basically screw in at the wall, further back in the cylinder. It just makes the exhaust removal so much easier and putting it back on again. Obviously, most of you wouldn't ever take an exhaust off anyway, but you might want to do a bit of a clean out or something like that. But I thought that was um, a pretty good design actually on their, on their behalf. But there we go. Then we're going to go up to our main workshop where we've got our service laptop plugged in. So I'll be two minutes and we'll be up the top.
Right, so there's some connectors and wires here. Fundamentally, this wire that is connected into the block here is for our, the service department. So that is just connected in and pushed into place. When we connect it up to the laptop, we just pull it out, connect it up to the diagnostic software. That will then connect it up to the laptop, communicate with that. We go through all the service data, running times. As you see, it's searching for the product now. We can update the customer's data. So if it ever went to another shop, they would know where the machine has come from and what, what it's done as well. So we'll just unplug that one again, like so. Plug that back into place. The other plug I've just pulled out of its little holder to gain access will just go back into place. Now that is actually a connector for your fleet services and the fleet services module, which you can buy for all Husqvarna professional products, just goes in here. And then there'll be a wire that comes out. You plug that straight into the connector. And then basically what that will do, that will allow you to uh, read all the service data, keep track of your fleet, employees, what they're doing, run times on the product, etc. So that's a handy little feature there. That means it doesn't need to be plugged on or screwed into a top casing of the product either. Just keeps it out of the way. Right, so just to show you another feature of some of the XP products. My handy little um, fuel pipe grabber, for a better term. That little bulge there, that's actually got a, a magnet, sorry, should I say, in there. And what that does is if there's any metal filings that can get sucked through your, should we say, very fine fuel filter from, say, a fuel tank or fuel can or anything like that, then this, will basically stop any debris going into the carburetor. And they are fitted on, well, pretty much all the auto-tune products now from Husqvarna. So that's a really handy feature. So here we are. Thanks ever so much for joining us today, guys. It's been a pleasure. I've certainly learned a few new bits and pieces about this 592 just by stripping it apart. They're now available to buy on our website, hayesmachinery.co.uk. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. It will really help us out. So I'm gonna say bye, but if you haven't seen any of the 592 XP chainsaw videos we've done previously, playing around in the woods, here's a few clips from us. Cheers.